a faffing around video. I need to uh, think my way through a vegetarian dish. Um, so, and I've, already, and I've got some things to use up and a bit of, uh, uh, I want to make something for my dinner. So it's going to be like two videos in one. We're going to uh, stuff some onions and uh, we're going to make like a um, leftovers lasagna um, using, but using um, some uh, noodles that came out of some cheap noodle soup um, that I couldn't really use. So I sifted all the noodles out of it and then used the rest of the soup as like stock powder. Um, so that's going to be instead of the, that's going to be the pasta element of it, uh, the other dish that we're doing. And then uh, I've got some uh, nettles, which I was in the freezer the day. And I kind of like, oh yeah, I've still got those frozen nettles that we kind of need to do something with. So we're going to do a lasagna, which is going to like an onion, um, nettle and feta lasagna uh, using the noodles. And then we're also going to take some of that mixture and we're going to stuff some onions with it. Um, um, it, it's more a case of that's not potentially what I will use to uh, when I need to do this vegetarian dish. Uh, it will be more a case of I just want to see if we can how about stuffing some onions uh, and see if it works. So I'm going to use that stuffing in those onions. But it's one of those things like a lasagna where lots of things are like interchangeable. Like when you're making um, uh, tortellinis or raviolis, like everything's kind of uh, cannelloni. It's all kind of interchange interchangeable what you kind of stuff it with. But I'm more interested in the method. So I'm talking when I should be actually doing something. So there's about 500 grams uh, worth of onions. How much? cooked nettles there are. So there's about 200 grams of cooked nettles. Uh, they are frozen still, but they'll soon defrost. So that's that. The temperature of the, ovens, the onions will uh, defrost those a little bit quicker. Yeah, so obviously I'm using nettles because that's what was in the freezer, but it's one of those things where that's been as cooked spinach or um, cooked uh, watercress or cabbage, something along those lines, or kale. You know, I just happen to be using nettles, so that's those are uh, melting those kind of quite quickly. Right, and then I've got some. Uh, so I poached the onions in just a little seasoned water, so they're almost cooked all the way through. It's the outsides that I'm interested in; it's not the insides. But the insides are going to be used to make the sauce to uh, base uh, to bake the onions in. So we'll use the same pan. So two thirds of tomatoes. And then the insides of the tomatoes, uh, of the onions, will be making a sauce. So let's slice off the end. And uh, it's going to be difficult. There's no two ways about it. I'm going to have to cut the onion. And I think we'll just use the outside two leaves. We're going to steam a bit. It's going to be a bit hot. So we'll just use the two outside leaves. Are they leaves of onions? I think so, maybe three leaves. I want it a little bit thicker. That's three. So that's that. That's the inside of the onion. That's going to go in the sauce. Some of these onions have split open. But we should be okay. So we want this to be kind of quite big onions. I'm trying not to burn myself. So what's that? That's one, two, three. So on the inside of that. That's going to go in the sauce. I might as well turn that on before we start. So that's that, that's that. Let's do this one as well. That can go on the compost. Can you see what I'm doing? I was just assuming someone was looking over my shoulder. So that's the inside of that one. Uh, that might be okay. So here we go, this one's a little bit of a disaster. It's split in a couple of places. So, whip the ends off. I could have let these cool down, but um, I'm in a rush, I'm going swimming. And I want something to put in the oven. And be ready for when I come home from swimming. There's nothing worse than coming home from swimming hungry, or exercising hungry, after, uh, coming home and after you exercise, because you're just absolutely ravenous. And go for the the easy stuff instead of the uh, something that's more substantial. Right, so that's that. Just let that frost a bit. Then 
And we're going to add the feta to that, and we're going to hump side it. Let, let that defrost for a bit first. No, we can pretend. Can't we? I'm sure some chickpeas in that. I might be. I mean, I know I'm stuffing an onion with an, with with onion, which is kind of not what I wanted to do. thinking my way through things. Actually, I'm going to take some of that out and mix it in something else. And I might need more or less. No, it's fine. I know what I'm doing now. So, we'll take some of that out. Fine, I'll, I'll need to leave enough. That's good. It's plenty of fine for the lasagna. Then we want some. We'll put some chickpeas in to fork it out. We have some cooked ones. They are the brown chickpeas because I prefer them because they've got more taste. These are chickpeas. So what we're going to put in? Any kind of beans that you've got, really. But these are what I've got. So how many? Spoonful of chickpeas. And then, how much better? I don't know. Let's half a packet and see. And then I reckon half a packet of feta. So 100 grams worth of feta. I think that'd be about right. Then that'll give us enough. Yeah, 100 grams. Four onions, I think it's about right. Get out of the way of the back. That should be nice. That's onions, nettles, and feta and chickpeas. Yeah, that'd be nice for that. Be moist enough that it'll hold it together. And the cheese will keep it together as well. Hopefully these vegetarians eat cheese. I'm not going to make any comments about vegetarians. I'll just get myself in trouble. Uh, but any chefs out there know exactly what I'm talking about. So now we need to season. The feta will be a little bit salty. Um, and I put a little bit of salt in with the onions. Certainly need some pepper. I'll have to use free running salt because if you put rock salt in, it doesn't melt properly. So when you taste it, it no, not necessarily it might not be a seasoned part or it might be an over seasoned part. So free running salt is a better option. That's an all right filling, isn't it? That's interesting enough. So we're doing four, we've got to give it a taste. Mm -mm -mm. That's nice. So we're doing four, so let's do it, divide like that, and then we know what one portion is. Open up. Stuffing in. Just do that. Squish down a bit, and then it wants to go in a dish. So like that. So we'll do. Just put them in the dish. Start off with. Let's fill the other one. Other ones. This will be a long video. A longer. I might put some time stamps in if I remember. So stuffing in that one. I think I made some things, a stuffing like this before and it was nice when it was finished. So there we go, stuffing in that one. Put it 
Okay, this is a little bit too big for four. I probably could have done for six in, but anyway. I think, I mean, by using the onions, you're kind of getting away from, if anyone's celiac. So things start getting difficult. You know, I mean, lots, lots of vegetarians and vegans complain about restaurants not really looking after them. From a from a restaurant's point of view, a chef's point of view, vegetarians and vegans generally come with other requirements as well, which starts making things really complicated. Not that I'm complaining about vegetarians and vegans. Just giving the other side of the argument, it's just starts getting a bit difficult when someone's a or lots of different things so if someone is vegetarian uh, that's fine uh, but then that also comes into play things that they don't want to eat as well so they might be vegetarian but they might be allergic, allergic to gluten or they might not eat cheese they might eat eggs they, or they might eat fish there's lots of kind of variables when it starts getting a bit complicated so stuffed onions that's that part of the oh, well, look at that. So much Surprise. I made something that tastes really nice. Right, how's that melted enough? Actually, this would make a really nice filling for a cannelloni or stuffed pancakes as well. Or even raviolis and tortellinis. Or tortelloni. Tortellini. Oh, right. So, that certainly wants seasoning. Not that much. And it certainly wants some pepper. And then by default, it's going to get a pack and a half, so it's going to get 300 grams worth of fat in it. actually make a really nice cannelloni filling. I don't know why people don't go out and pick nettles. They're free and they're much nicer than spinach. I mean, I suppose you have to actually go out and pick them, don't you? Which I don't think people like actually like doing things like that. I much prefer to go to the supermarket and buy something in a packet. So, hands. Right, So I could have put the chickpeas in this as well. But no, how do you know? Right, it probably needs. No, that'll be fine. Let's just wing it. Let's just wing it. I must remember to turn that off, otherwise it's going to make a mess in the oven. So how many layers are we going to do? We're going to do three layers. It's just going to stick to the bottom of that container. I'm going to put a bit of liquid in the bottom of that. That's what we need. So we'll do three layers, or four. Let's do four. So divide that into four. And we'll see if we're going to do four layers. There needs to be moisture in to cook the pasta. Be a little bit different if we were using fresh pasta. But I'm certainly not in the mood for making fresh pasta today. Probably going to stick really badly to the bottom of there. See how we go. I think a bit more water.
because we're going to need that steam to cook faster. If it's a little bit moist on the bottom, it's not going to stick as much. And then we need to be attentive towards that source. So. This is just what I've got. Spaghetti is fine, or just a layer of any pasta that you've got in the cupboard. There you can see the bits of soup that didn't uh, sit out. So that's the first layer. I don't know how much that was. Everything's just a bit of a guess. pause you get the idea of what I'm doing so it'll be another layer of pasta and then another layer of the filling and then another layer of pasta and so on and so forth final layer of pasta and then white sauce on top and we're back then right we're back so um, layers of pasta layers of filling and then white sauce on top so I have to make some white sauce something else but this is also a reason why I'm doing uh, this so simple white sauce, you can buy it, you can make it, I made it, and I used a um, Bermania, I made a video on it, believe it or not, so and then just some white sauce on top, oh yeah I put a stock, couple of stock cubes in it as well, well it's more than a couple of stock cubes, but it just makes a white sauce just that little bit more. Interesting if you put some stock cubes in the center there in the spatula. Gives the spread things over. Put that to the back, otherwise I'm gonna knock it off. That's down a bit as well, I think. Get one bit more sauce than that. Another ladle. If it's going to need the moisture to cook the pasta, the pasta, all the pasta will do. If there's not enough moisture, it will just bake hard. So there needs to be a certain amount of moisture in there for the pasta to absorb it and for the pasta to cook. Although I think dry pasta is already cooked. I think they cook it and then they dry it out. I think. I think. I don't think that, I don't think they can make it and then um, and then dry it and then sell it. I think it's cooked and then dried. I think. Right. So that's the wash. And then also out the freezer as well. Well, I'm just going to get the freezer. Some frozen uh, red cheese, red cheese, which is grated, which is something else. Rather than waste the cheese, I thought well, I'll grate it and then it can go in the freezer. So a bit of a waste of plastic. Well, that's going to be a mess. If I do it that way. And then the tomato sauce is just cooking on the back of the stove. And I think I'm going to leave the pasta sauce, the tomato sauce cooking while I'm out. And then it'll reduce down. And it'll take all those, the onions are already cooked. But it'll take on all those extra flavours. And become a little bit more concentrated. And a little bit more interesting. Because they're just... Cheap tins of tomatoes. You can buy the best tomato in tins if you like. But I kind of understand that a lot of people are on a on a cheap budget. So you kinda of need to know how to do make turn cheaper things a little bit more interesting. Right, so that's that. I can go in the oven before I go swimming. And I'll put it on about 150, something like that, and it'll be ready for when I come home. And this sauce can gently cook away while I'm out, and then we'll um, 
smother the onions in it, but I think that's going to be really nice. And we'll cook that when I come back. And then that can be leftover dinner sometime during the week. But anyway, that's it for the moment. 150 degrees for that. Cook pasta sauce, pasta, tomato sauce, blitz it, pour it over the onions, maybe a bit of cheese on top, and then bake in the oven. Sauce has been cooking for a couple of hours, it's reduced down, the tomatoes and onions have gone to really soft, so we'll give that a pulse in the blender and we'll give it a taste with uh, and see if it needs a bit of salt and pepper. If it turns that wrong. plastic not on metal because it'll uh, it'll snap the plastic always do it on your hand and then just save you cracking the plastic need to taste the sauce it's gonna benefit from a bit of pepper and a bit of salt we can use rock salt because it's hot and that'll melt in it needs about that much, my professional opinion. And then how are we going to do this? We will move the onions a bit. What about the sauce on the bottom? Just saves me having to lift the onions out of the container to put some sauce underneath otherwise they'll just want to bake onto the bottom of the uh, of the container so move that up and add some more sauce there that's fine and then sauce all over I'm gonna I'm not gonna cook this today I'm gonna cook it tomorrow so with lots of sauce. Probably too much. Probably just need a one tin of tomatoes. To be honest, that's way too much sauce. But we'll adjust the recipe accordingly. Although we'll see. We'll see. So I'm gonna cook that tomorrow and I'll put some cheese on the top of that as well I think. Right, so that that enough sauce. It probably, mm, yeah, probably a smaller container and one tin of tomatoes. Two tins of tomatoes for, for f six onions, I think. Maybe that's about right. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I'll have a think about that. We'll see what it turns out like tomorrow and I'll adjust the recipe. Accordingly. And then, the odds and sauce. Pasta bake, lasagna is ready. Look at that. So I'll put it in a, mm, it was in for about an hour and a half on 125, and I'll just turn it up to 200 for the last half an hour of cooking. Right, throw in the scissors. Scissors to cook, to cut cheese, otherwise it just turns up into a big long string of mess and one person gets hold of cheese. Set it down so we'll cook through the cut through the pasta. And then we'll have a look. I can tell the pasta's cooked. It feels soft. So we should be okay. Right, so let's move that out of the way. And that salt out of the way. And then we'll get our plates. Move that. It's probably stuck to the bottom as well, as well as the sides, but 
should be the right. Really should use a cloth. No, that's okay. That's all right, that's worked. That was good. That was good. That was good. That's a good taste. And I think, well, we'll take a picture. Oh, no, I've got. Excuse the chewing noises. lovely um nettles out for everyone uh so i would i recommend um spinach or watercress or some cavolo nero or something along those kind of greens um but yeah that works for something that came out the freezer and use up a few odds and sods et and we'll see what the onions are like uh, when i cook them tomorrow Right, let's get the onions in the oven. Well, I'm going out, so I'm going to put them in the oven. Same as did last night with the other dish. Sometimes I hate plastic. So I'm going to go out. So I'm going to put them in at 125, and then they'll slowly heat up and start to. Caramelized cheese on top. Is it caramelized cheese? Toast? Toasted cheese? But it's just the cheap Italian stuff. But anything you've got. And then we'll kind of see how it turns out. Because we're doing it on a lower temperature. Hopefully the cheese will melt into them. the tomato sauce. Maybe you should weigh the cheese and I know what should use with the scales. So I have used um, how much is it? grams. I've used 40 grams. Let's use 50 grams. Let's push the boat out. Actually kind of reminds me of Baked gnocchi dish that we used to do years ago. Anyway. So, in the oven, 125 degrees. I suppose if I was doing it and I was going to be in, I'd put it in at 1 160 and let it heat up gently and then kind of finish it off. Uh, I mean, the last thing you, the last thing you kind of want is you want the it's the cold in the centre and the um, and the top to be cooked. But anyway, so under 25 degrees, I'm going to be out for about an hour and a half, and that will almost be ready when I get home. We are ready. Well, everything's nice and bubbly. So let's have a look at that. Turn it up a little bit. Right, I need a plate and a spoon. And we'll just pull the one out. If I have a spoon. So they look like they've held together kind of quite well. That looks alright, doesn't it? Let's have a spoon. 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 Let's have a 
I'm sorry, I, I was concerned that it was all going to collapse. But it's held together quite nicely. Now, the stuffing is just what I had. So it's one of those things that put any stuffing in you want. Right. It tastes alright, it might just do the job. I mean, you certainly miss out the cheese, and then you've got a um, vegan instead of just vegetarian. Well, I'll actually put meat in and make it meaty. nettles because I'm at home uh, I wouldn't use I wouldn't feed anyone else nettles it might get a bit funny with me but um, yeah uh, pack it full of herbs that'd be nice mm. it's even nicer when you get the Italian hard cheese on top of that as well yeah, there we go. Mm. Which makes me think. Do you know if you were a, if you were gluten intolerant, um, and you kind of wanted to stay away from pasta, you could actually use onions as the um, as the layers in a um, in a lasagna. Ah, you could use that. You could even stuff it with um, some like vermicelli pasta as well. So, or like a meatball mixture, or anything like that. That's really nice. I'm going to enjoy the rest of that.